I'm Stuart Appleby and I'm a sports video journalist and interviewer and you're watching my showreel. Roger, you're back in London, back in familiar surroundings. You've had yeah. a practice at the O2 today. Do you feel in the groove? You've had a great week off. You've been a great form this year. You must be more than ready. Yes, I mean, sort of ready. It must bring back so many special memories for you coming here to Wimbledon where you've had so much success in the past. Yeah, no, absolutely brings back all the memories. Alistair, obviously a tough day for England, but you must t take an enormous amount of pride in the way we battled out there today. Yeah, it was, you know, that first two hours, you know, you up to, well, one hour and 59 minutes, it was, you know, a fantastic partnership by Mo and Routine. You know that the challenge for you now is a quick turnaround. How, how do you recover so quickly for tomorrow's semi-final? Well, it's, it's not the first time I am in this position, so I'm, I know what I need to do. So, do you use your past experience to help you with the, with the tournament coming up? Yeah, of course. I think you know experience is vital in this game, especially at the level we play. You've had incredibly successful careers, both of you. What has been the drive and inspiration that just keeps you going and, and makes you want to achieve even more? Um, always very good, uh, very important to have a dream in life. Of course, at lunch, 81 not out. Were you thinking about the magic three-figure mark? Um, I'd like to say no, but I probably was. Okay. And they've brought obviously some great players. They've brought some great players into uh, into the, obviously the team. JJ, I'm just wondering if you've been surprised with how much West Ham has struggled this season. I know injuries have played a big part, but they've been in the relegation bottom three for most of the campaign. Is that a surprise to you, considering they finished tenth? I think everybody struggles with everything. Ryan, do you think in the lead up to Southampton's first goal today is possibly a foul on Manu Vidic? You seem to get a bit of an elbow from Ricky Lamb. Yeah, I just thought it was um, Lambert's elbow, just can't be. How do you keep the team focused on, on next week's match against Chelsea and keep everyone level headed? The focus is always for the team. You know, I always say to the players every day to, to be at your best. Harry, I'm just wondering what specific area of your team you were looking to strengthen in the transfer window. Are you keen to get more bodies in or was there a specific... No, I'm not looking at too much, really looking, looking at striker. The creation of a new tier in English football to accommodate Premier League B teams is the latest proposal launched by the Football Association Commission. There's a lot of scepticism about that idea. What, what do you think you could say to support it? I would say go and look in Spain, go and look in Holland, go and look in Germany, uh, who by and large are more successful than we are at bringing kids through. David, how tough did Palace make it for you today? Palace made it tough because I think the, the record here has been, since Tony's taken over, they've been brilliantly disciplined, organised. Sam, knowing David Moyes as well as you do, do you see him coming back into management sooner rather than later? I wouldn't advise it. Just a last question, that Manchester United philosophy which Giggs and Butt have and Skulls behind the scenes, is that crucial to the club moving forward again and challenging for trophies next year? I think, uh, you know, to understand Manchester United history and tradition um, is always important. I think it's important that we keep Manchester United culture at Manchester United. This, this is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, what separates us from, from most other football clubs. The urgency your team showed in the last 20 minutes was maybe a little bit too late in coming? Well, it was too late because we didn't score. What's been the issue with, with scoring goals? Your team's struggling to create chances at the moment. You know, the emphasis of the game today um, was never changed because of our threat. And we've got to threaten the goal more than we did. Do you think uh, Cardiff were really negative in the way they set up today to counteract Saints' kind of possession type play? No, I'm, I fully respect the, how the other, how the opposition sets up. I'm, I'm not going to judge how they set up. Polly, you've gone within three points of Premier League survival with today's win. Could this yep. potentially be a turning point ahead of your remaining four games? Definitely. Before today, uh, I don't think many expected us to uh, come here and take points. Uh, a first win in seven games, it all but secures Premier League status really for next season. How important was today's win? It was, it was massive. Oh, what was your view of, of the red card incident? Well, I've looked at it and... Um... I just wondered with the first goal which Villa scored. Was there a foul with the... Well, we think so. Chris, at this stage of the season when... You're obviously fighting relegation. How disappointing is it to, to hear boos from the crowd because you really need them mm. behind you, certainly at this stage of the season? It, it, it's disappointing, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a reaction to 
to what they see. At this, at this moment in time, we need, we need, of course, everybody pulling in the right direction. On Liverpool, your former club, they're, they're going so well. They could win the Premier League this season. How do you rate their chances? Do you think they're in their driving seat now? Well, I certainly rate their chances in terms of, you know, there's... there's most of the season gone now and they're still in there fighting. Roberto, how much did the early goal disrupt your plans and tactics which you'd made for the match? This game was difficult and after that we considered the first goal after four minutes was more difficult but this don't change that we, we didn't play this game, we played really bad. Well, we're Real Madrid, and when we compete, we compete to win. I think it's, it's massive. tremendous and obviously Luis Suarez is a pivotal part of it you'll be against him in the summer how, how do you kind of weigh up that contest to play what is one of the best players in the world I'm gonna steal his boots before he gets there and then obviously he won't be able to perform so um, but on a serious note he's a, he's a great player just a final one for me on England this summer in the World Cup the squad's just been announced a, what do you think of the squad, and B, how do you think we're fair in I, I think the, the squad's got a nice balance. The Soccer X conference here in Jordan has raised several questions about the progression of Asian football. How are preparations going for that? And there's been some big issues surrounding it. But how do you think it will go generally and, and the preparation stage so far? Sure, I think that... Uh, uh, it would be great to have a celebration in our region. Uh, we will do all we can to, to facilitate uh, that. I caught up with Australia's Tim Cahill ahead of their friendly against Ecuador. How does it feel to be Australia's all-time leading goal scorer? It's a dream come true. I think, you know, just to play for your country is one thing, but obviously to break this record is, is something that I want to go on and, you know, achieve more. And, do Argentina's big hopes rest on Lionel Messi and whether he can actually produce this time? Because in 2010, he was a little bit disappointing. He was a bit disappointed with his last World Cup. Yeah. And this is really the showpiece event on the ATP Champions Tour. Is it comparable to Wimbledon in that respect? Absolutely. I mean, this is sort of our Wimbledon. I mean, it's, it's obviously an incredible place to play. It's got a lot of history. And uh, that's what keeps bringing the players back. Has it been enjoyable for you to, to go from the commentary box, if you like, to the practice call again? Well, back to where I'm from, really, back to the practice calls. If Rafa wins the French Open tomorrow, he'll have 14 slams, he's three behind your close friend, Roger Federer. Do you, do you think he could catch him? It, it looks quite close that he could. I, I think he I mean, I, I think he could catch him. Hemman and Ivanizovic, who played a classic five-set Wimbledon semi-final over three days in 2001, took to the ice rink for a different kind of practice session. It's going to be fun. Uh, first of all, playing team is always fun. Definitely it's not going to be a three-day match because we have a roof. And he was delighted to experience the Royal Albert Hall atmosphere for the first time. You feel history here. and uh, It's such a great venue. Uh, I was told that how beautiful it was, but you have to see it to feel it. And you know Wimbledon pretty well, but if you looked at the tournament as a whole, if you could change one thing, would there be anything you would change? Um, the Wi-Fi in the locker rooms can be a bit better. It's going to be a hectic month for you, but how do you relax away from the court when there is, you say you don't kind of talk about, think about the pressure, but there will be some hype around you. How, how do you relax and kind of take time away from the court? Um, I just watch TV really, nothing else, nothing special. But did you realise when you were playing these guys, McEnroe, Borg, etc. at the time, that these were special rivalries? Did you, did you think they would have a place in history or were you playing the moment? Well, you're just playing the moment really and, and too busy trying to win Wimbledon in the US Open and, and be a part of uh, what's going on. I was going to say, do you, do you take as much pleasure in your batting as you do in, in taking the two wickets this evening? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're helping the team out uh, of Jimmy and Brody of Shaw over and over again. Yeah, hopefully, um, you know, we can we can perform well again this week here and um, have a win maybe.
without without doubt there's four test matches left and it's nil all so yeah definitely the broad appeal has got bigger thanks to twitter and facebook and and these sort of uh, uh, mediums so we're very grateful to all who have shown an interest a man you know well, of course. How do you see that relationship going when he's able to put on a sorry shirt here at the Kiev Open? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's great to have a match winner like that in our environment. And she was amazing. Um, everyone was so proud that, that she was able to support the team today. She had a huge knowledge of sailing. I think she's very excited about potentially coming out on, on one of these boats in the near future. Uh, and it was, a, it was a real honor for us that uh, she was able to support us. He's doing an event, I believe, uh, at the Wanderers Stadium, um, the home of your favorite team. Do you, what do you think about that? Um, well, I, I think he wants to come and see the outcome and maybe he wants to, he's only come to Bolton because of me. Is that plus point that you're playing quite freely with a big couple of months ahead as well? Uh, there's, there's, th there's three, four, five really big months coming up. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's lying ahead. How, how do you keep yourself <coughs> so fit and, and still motivated to keep running after all these years? Well, running is, is in my blood now. 